Hello and welcome to this new lesson in which we are going to talk about ESP32 pin out. Which general purpose input output pins should you use? Now, this is how the physical layout of the ESP board locks and as you can see it's very similar to the Arduino Nano but it has a Wi-Fi built in. Now the ESP32 peripherals include 18 analog to digital converter or ADC channel where you can receive analog signals and these signals can be converted to digital internally. It also has three SPI interfaces for serial communication and three UART interfaces for serial communication and two I2C interfaces for serial communication. So these, let's say uh, eight modules or eight pins can be used to allow serial communication with multiple devices that support SPI, I2C or I2C and UART. It also has 16 PWM output channels which help uh, produce an analog output from the ESP pins. It also has two digital to analog converters and two I2S interfaces. It also has thin capacitive sensing general purpose input output. I'll provide more data and more details about each of these pins in the resources lecture but since we have a lot of them we don't want to get caught in the details. Now what we need to know is the pin out itself. As you can see this is how the board looks. This is the USB uh, board and you are going to hook up your USB connector here and the other side will be connected to your computer. As you can see these are the pins. GPIO means general purpose input output. Now there is more than one general purpose input output as you can see here and each of these pins has more than one function. As you can see, usually pins comes with many names, HSPI and ADC, analog digital converter, and general purpose input output. So you can use it as input output pin or to receive analog signal or for SPI or for R2C. So the choice is yours. Now, as you can see, these pins, all of them, are numbered for easy access so that you can easily know which pin is connected to which. Now additionally, there are pins with specific features that make them suitable or not for a specific project. The following uh, demonstration shows you some of these pins and I'm going to talk about each of these pins in details and if it can be used as input or output. Now, the pins highlighted in green here, I'll show you a table to summarize this information. Again, the pins highlighted in green are okay to use. The ones highlighted in yellow are okay to use, but you need to pay attention because they may have unexpected behavior mainly at boot time. While the pins highlighted in red are not recommended to use as input or output. Now, the general purpose input output pin number zero is, as you can see, okay to use, but you need to pay extra attention because it may have unexpected behavior at boot time. So it can be used as pull up input or as output. It outputs PWM signal at boot. Pin number one, can be used as TX pin for serial communication or output pin, a debug output at boot. Pin number two is okay to be used as input or output and usually it is connected to onboard LED so you can use it to test a code or to test our page function because you don't have to connect extra component, it already have built in LED. Pin number three is okay to use as input, but you can't use it as output. It's high at boot, so it will read one at boot. Pin num pins number four and five are okay to use as input or output, and uh, pin number five also outputs PWM signal at boot. Pins from six to eleven 
are connected to the integrated SPI flash so you can't use them as input or output pin number 12 is ok to use but put will fail if bold high so it's ok to use as input but you need to pay extra attention for this note and if you are connecting it as output it's ok you don't have any problems pins from 13 to 16 are ok to be used as input or output without paying extra attention now as you can see same for pins from 17 to 33 while 34 35 36 and 39 are input only pins you can you, you can't use them as output now on our uh, examples and on our practice uh, tests we are going to use pin number two which has built-in lid on board built-in lid and using that on board built-in lid will make it easier for us to test out or to try different things if we are making a web page with a button to control it via internet now that's it for the pin out now I will add extra information uh, as articles to this section of the course to let you know more information about the general purpose input output pins but for me, what I need you to know at this point is that we have pins that can be used easily without any uh, extra attention as input output, which are basically these pins 2, 4, 5, 13 to 16, and 17 to 33. And if we want input only pins, we can use 34, 35, 36, or 39. Now, if we need extra features, if we need PWM, ADC, or DAC, if we need a capacitor enabled bin or PWM bin, we can go on and check this schematic. And from these pins, you can see that in our case, general purpose pin number 36 can be used as ADC or analog digital converter as you can see and it has input only state you can use this schematic print it out to refer to it whenever you need to do something same for here you can see from this image that pin number 25 can be used as digital to analog converter and pin number 26 can also be used used as digital to analog converter or analog digital converter so depending on what you need or what's your end goal you are going to check this schematic and make sure that you choose the pin that fits your need. So if you are going to use a pin as output, you can't use pin number 34 because as you can see here, it's only input only pin. And if you want to use, let's say analog digital converter, you can't use this pin, pin number 17, because it only supports serial communication and input output, uh, regular input output or digital input output. So before using any pin, uh, take a minute or two to make sure that it supports what you are going to do and the sensors or the stuff that you are going to connect it to. Uh, whether they are analog or digital, they are input like push button or output like LED. You need to connect the element to the right pin before start coding to avoid having problems in the future once you start testing your code if you have any question or if you have a project that you don't exactly know which pins might fit for that project you can leave a question in the q and a board i'll be more than happy to help answer all of your concerns thanks for watching this is ashra from educational engineering team